everybody. Uh, it's February 22nd, the day after a really historic day at City Hall. I'm really, really pleased to be able to bring you news. Maybe you've heard it already, but if you haven't, uh, you know, hold on to your seats. This is really important. Uh, yesterday, um, a coalition of groups uh, made up of many, many different uh, groups that advocate for people with precarious status or no legal status in this country, as well as undocumented people themselves, as well as groups uh, and organizations uh, like the one I work for, the Assaulted Women's Program at George Brown College, um, and many, many others, uh, through the leadership of undocumented people and No One Is Illegal Toronto, um, has uh, convinced City Hall to adopt an access without fear policy. And <coughs> this has been described as historic in the papers, and it really, uh, really truly is. So let me tell you a bit about it, because um, although we had an amazing victory yesterday, uh, the work of the community, uh, and it was community that came together to, that, uh, in concert with some uh, really progressive city councillors, but it was community that really made this happen. Um, so what happened was a few weeks ago uh, at the Community Development and Recreation Committee, uh, they received a report from a task force that they had commissioned. Uh, it was the Toronto Newcomer Strategy was the report that was released. It was an excellent report um, that was um, put out by a panel of experts on these um, issues that newcomers face in Toronto. And <coughs> they were talking about people who come uh, under our current immigration system and some of the challenges they face, and I know you're probably really familiar with those. But one of the things they talked about was the fact that the temporary worker program that has been instituted by our federal government, which is bringing in people, uh, more and more people, in fact more people come in uh, to our country under that program than come in through other immigration channels, uh, that that worker program which restricts people to being residing in Canada for four years and then they must leave. So it's a terrible program in that it doesn't allow people to come here and, and make roots and set up their families and set up uh, circles of support and that kind of thing. And what the report talked about was the fact that um, when that first four-year limit is up, a lot of people either through a mistake because they don't understand the rules or because they uh, apply for different kinds of status and are in limbo or some people will decide that they can't or don't want to go back home what we will have in Toronto is an increase in the number of undocumented people already in Toronto uh, there are anywhere between 100 and 200,000 undocumented people people with precarious status and um, what uh, the coalition the Solidarity City uh, campaign decided to do was to talk to the Community Development and Recreation Committee about the importance of <clears throat> providing access to all city funded services to undocumented people uh, without fear of deportation, without fear of their immigration status being shared with the federal government. And we pushed uh, and brought a really wonderful motion to the committee that, to their credit, they adopted and decided to take forward to City Council. And yesterday at City Council, that motion, it was called 18.5, that motion was debated. There was a long debate, and, uh, and I believe that you uh, will put up uh, a website where you can go and watch that debate uh, as it happened. But uh, during that debate, there was a lot of back and forth. It was really hard to tell how it was going to go. But uh, uh, members of the Solidarity City campaign furiously worked the phones with councillors, were talking with them all day, putting out talking points. We had organized with people ahead of time to phone their councillor, to write to their councillor, to meet with their councillor, and to really press on the councillors the need for um, sanctuary city status for Toronto. In other words, making this a city where every resident of the city, no matter what their status, can take out a library card, use an emergency shelter, uh, go to public health, uh, get a flu shot, um, uh, uh, try to get housing, try to make access different services uh, without fear of being deported or being reported to authorities. And I'm really, really happy to let you know that City Council, by an overwhelming majority, uh, surprised even us, 
um, did vote in favor of this policy. Uh, it was really hard to tell how it was going to go, but they did vote in favor of the policy. Uh, you can see my shirt here. We were there. Uh, hundreds of people were there wearing our yellow t-shirts, standing up as the votes were cast. It was very, very dramatic, and it was very, very thrilling. Uh, and I can tell you people were very, very happy, as we all should be, to see that our city has directed. Uh, so what they've done is they've directed Chris Billinger, who's the um, Executive Director of Social Development, Finance and Administration. He's going to put together a report, or his staff will put together a report on how to improve access to services without fear. He's going to uh, put together a report about how city employees can be trained to uh, make sure that all city employees across the board uh, understand what this policy is and uh, make sure that they understand that they are not to ask people for their immigration status as a condition of receiving services. The other thing that's really significant as, is that the motion uh, included uh, two pieces that um, directed the city uh, to advocate with the provincial government to make provincial services available to uh, people who are undocumented or don't have um, status, uh, to make services like OW, ODSP, policing services, and this is so important, folks, because, of course, the police have a don't ask policy. They are supposed to not ask your immigration status. We know that that <coughs> does happen quite often. But if they do find out your immigration status, like when uh, an abusive man, for example, tells them that his victim uh, is here in the country illegally, then the police will report that to Immigration Canada. And we, would, we really want to see that stopped. And so the city is going to be advocating uh, with the province to make all services available to people without fear. Um, that is people's right in this country to have their rights protected under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We're going to see that upheld. And we're going to have the city um, advocating with the federal government. And, uh, you know, some of our city councillors and our mayor certainly are very, very close with Stephen Harper, Jason Kenney, and other very right-wing <coughs> MPs and the Prime Minister, but we want to see the city, and this motion directs the city to advocate with the federal government to regularize, to uh, provide amnesty for undocumented people, to uh, discuss how that might happen and what ways we can do this. This has happened before in Canada. In the 70s and in the 80s, um, there were amnesty programs, there were regularization programs. The United States, under President Obama, is looking at doing that right now. This is not a far-fetched goal. This is something that can happen uh, if the community gets behind it. And this is where we all come in. Just because we've won this victory doesn't mean the battle is over. We're going to—they're obviously going to face resistance to this. We have an administration at the city. While we've got a majority of the councillors on side, you know that we've got a mayor who is not a progressive person, uh, who frankly doesn't even care about these issues. He doesn't see them as important. Yesterday during the debate, he was overheard to uh, to support a motion by Doug Holliday, which was to just receive the report that was in front of them, and that means in city hall language to just. Kill it. In other words, put it on a shelf, pay no attention to it. This indicates that uh, the mayor does not see this as an important issue, and we've got to prove him wrong. So we're going to put up some websites. I won't read them out to you. Uh, they're shortened websites, but we'll put those up on the screen for you. Visit them. There's one that'll uh, show you how you can sign up to stay in touch with the Solidarity City campaign so that you can find out further actions. The report on all of this is going to be coming back next September, so we've got to be on it. We've got to be phoning and, and getting involved and letting uh, the staff at the city know what recommendations we think need to be in that report. Um, we can't just leave it up to staff at city. We've got to be involved. You can uh, also write to us at SolidarityCityToronto at gmail.com, and that's a way that you can become involved. Um, there's another website to uh, check out and to share with people. You can also go to Solidarity City on Facebook. Find us on Facebook and find out how you can become involved, how the organization that you're with can become involved, and how we can keep the pressure on. Uh, let city councillors know that this is not just a symbolic gesture. It's amazing that Toronto has become the first sanctuary city in Canada. 
and this is something that hopefully will inspire other cities right across the, the country to do the same thing. And this would be a real rebuke to our federal government, which as you know, has been implementing uh, <clears throat> law after law after law that penalizes, punishes, deports, and criminalizes newcomers to this country, uh, designates certain countries as safe and, and will not allow any refugees from them, such as Roma people, people from Mexico, uh, many other, St. Vincent and Grenadines, many other countries which we know have terrible human rights records. Um, it also, uh, this government has been uh, seeking ways to revoke people's permanent residence status. So this action on the part of our city is not only an amazing thing for the city of Toronto, but it is definitely a rebuke to the federal government. It lets the federal government know that our progressive city will not climb on board that particular gravy train, as Mr. Ford would like to put it. Uh, we are not in the business of deporting people. We are in the business of welcoming people to this city and providing safety and sanctuary to all uh, and uh, recognizing that people are fleeing and leaving situations that are very, very dire and are here uh, without papers for many, many reasons. So let's keep on top of it. I encourage you to join with the Solidarity City campaign uh, to keep the pressure up. Phone your councillor and let them know that you're really happy that they voted for this, uh, that this is something that you appreciate as a constituent. Uh, so let them know that you support them in their, their decision to do this. Uh, but at the same time, let them know that you're going to be watching, you're going to be informing. If you know people or live with or are uh, working with people who are undocumented, make sure that they understand that they are allowed to use city services without that kind of fear. Um, and, you know, work with them uh, and back them up. If people run into problems, we have to make sure that we uh, complain about that. We let the city know that uh, the, the, the policy is not being respected. Okay? So none of these policies are any good without accountability. That's our job as community members. It's our job to stay uh, on top of this, but it's also our job to celebrate this. And uh, I'm just so pleased. Uh, those of you who participated in this, thank you very much. Uh, and we'll see you out there proud to be part of a solidarity city, a sanctuary city of Toronto. Thanks.